How's buddy? My name is Eric, and welcome back to North Korean Operating System Review. Uh, people seem to really like the North Korean Operating Systems. This is the other uh, North Korean Operating System, which is called Red Star OS 2. Now, this one, unlike uh, the other one, uh, looks more like Windows XP instead of looking like Mac OS. Uh, now, of course, given I can't read Korean, this is going to be fun. Uh, I'm just going to keep... Yeah, I'm just kind of stuck doing the whole I keep pushing buttons until it works. Okay. And here's our network settings. I wonder if this one is able to connect to the internet. P and C. Okay, it's needed. So let's assume this is... This could be our user. Oh. Okay, no, this is our password. Probably our root password. I can use uh, visual translation from ChatGPT if we really get stuck. Uh, but it seems like we've got the installer going. Okay. So now I'm going to guess that saying take out the disk and restart. Now we don't actually need to remove the disk because of how our BIOS is set up. So we can just go and do, just go ahead and. Okay. And now we've got a root user. So we can just use the password that we already made. Oh, and it's even got a lovely uh, login sound. And it looks kind of like Windows XP. Uh, this is still, I believe, oh, and it's even got a Windows logo, or uh, what appears to be a Windows logo. Now let's see what we can do with it. We can go to index, okay. Well, at least now it's got, this one actually has a domain. Now it's probably still for the North Korean intranet, which just so people understand intranet or intranet is not a mispronunciation of internet it is a different thing internet is the global internet that everyone except for people in north korea and i think also cuba can access intranets are basically any private network so for example companies have them but in this case there's a whole national one that anybody within uh, the dprk can use so let's try let's just uh looks like we're online then so we don't have to do any special tricks in order to get this to work. It doesn't seem to have all the restrictions that later one, but of course it's too old uh, for most websites to actually work. And we can see the beta wiki article. It's uh, redirecting us, but I, I don't think we're going to get it to work. Now we can just try the same said command that we were able to use on the previous version because we are logged in as the root user, so it should be possible if we can find the terminal. And there we go. I just went into the system file and was able to find it that way. I don't know if there's a shortcut, but we're going to find out soon because we can actually change our language settings and replace this with en underscore us. Now something you can see that's sort of interesting is how uh, it is kp, which is for uh, North Korean, Korean instead of South Korean. Not that there's any meaningful difference in the language, but it's just sort of a strange thing. And now we can also change the KDE to English with a similar command. Now we've got that all set up correctly, so we should be in, in English. And on this version, there's no other real uh, tweaks because we don't have to, we don't have to remove any of the restrictions because there are none. And some people online say there's a lot of spyware in this. I'm sure there is, but none of it is going to be targeted at the global internet uh, because there's no point. So unless you uh, were using this in North Korea, you should be fine. Oh, okay. No, that's just because of the re... I thought for a second, oh no, have we somehow broken it by changing the language? Good luck. Uh, when we log in, everything will be in English. Yes. Wow, everything, they, they even have proper translations. Okay, so we got utilities. Okay, so the terminal was under here. Okay, so we got the usual KDE tools, then we've got multimedia, and I saw something that I thought was cool, is they've even got what looks like a uh, clone of Minesweeper. Oh, I clicked the wrong one, I want Minesweeper. K-Atomics, so that one is a K, maybe this is just a KDE a clone of Minesweeper, but it's still kind of cool. Although this one doesn't have... 
Oh wow, yeah, this is this is identical to mine. Let's just see if it's got Okay, it is it is a KDE game. Oh well. Still it's Minesweeper. I've got some other uh, built-in games. Yeah, I must say, once again, I really, uh, for all the things you'd say about North Korea, the, the amount of effort they put into recreating these different operating systems so that it looks just like the real thing is actually kind of amazing. Much like with the macOS version, this one does have a pretty good XP rise. And as far as I know, they're completely original. They don't, st it's not stolen from the internet. It's, now we can, of course, now we can try configuring, see if there's, I think I saw in one of the menus, uh, the okay. So you've just got a theme called Linux. And of course you can see your colors. Okay. Your backgrounds, now this is going to be the, this is the default picture. And we get a couple of different uh, pictures all taken, I believe within the North Korea. Oh, and they've even got the North Korean flag. Fly highly. Oh, and here we go. We got the Windows XP background. There's this cool site I found. I don't know if it's going to work because of the SSL issues, but there's this North Korean Google that searches uh, North Korean websites. Oh, and there's Ninara search engine. Now, of course, this is not going to work because, see, here you can tell it's an Antrina. It's a 10 IP, which is usually just used for local networks, but in North Korea, that's actually used for their country's local intranet for their whole internet. Okay. So it seems like my Korea will not load on this. Let's try. Let's just try typing it in manually to see. But unfortunately, it doesn't. And here is actually the Wikipedia article for the Kwang Myung uh, network, which is the official name of the North Korean intranet. It's called the Kwang Myung network. I'm not that good at pronouncing it, but uh, okay. So no, really, uh, for whatever reason, Google is like the only website that works with obsolete browsers because of uh, HTTPS certificate issues. So we got Trash, which is a Linux and Mac standard, not a not a uh, Windows one, but in Conqueror, we've got a Windows logo at the side, which is kind of cool. Oh, and we get an introduction. Let's see what that is. And of course, none of this is going to be translated. So these are different sites we could go to. And this one, given it's a domain, this one in theory could, uh, be accessible from the global internet because I've heard within the within the local network they don't really use uh, domains. Okay, we got the system requirements. So you need a Pentium Four, uh, two hundred fifty six megabytes of RAM. That's actually quite a bit more than legit Windows XP required, but I can believe it. Okay, and here's wow, they even have supported printers. They actually they actually went hardcore on this. Yeah, let's go print system browser, storage, and no obvious indication that, it, that it's, it, do, it doesn't have like the blocks that the other one did. Not that I even understood the point, because if someone has managed to connect uh, Redstone 3.0 to the internet, uh, surely that means they have internet access, which nobody who shouldn't have has in North Korea. It, it just seems like a really pointless uh, last measure. Let's see if there's any other utilities worth looking at. This one definitely has less. You can tell this is an earlier version. Okay, let's see what they got for graphics. Please have something better than GIMP. Oh, it's it's color paint, which it was Katie's uh, paint. Now they've got a really nice image editor, which is called Krita. But this is a KD clone of uh, paint. It's kind of interesting how Linux distros have evolved from being much closer copies of Windows to nowadays they come with a lot of stuff that Windows doesn't and you, you wouldn't really see it that way. Okay, Kmag, so there's even accessibility. 
Okay, info center. Let's see if that's got anything to say about running. Okay. Doesn't mention the distro name anywhere. Oh, recognizes our very bizarre CPU. SCSI X server. I don't think there's any way we're getting NeoFetch running on this because the, the package is for this are going to be dead. Uh, it is, and let's, I, I don't know if we're going to find, let me see actually, I think I can use the terminal to do this. I don't know if we'll find many references, but this is actually a modified version of Red Hat Linux, not Red Hat Enterprise Linux, but before Red Hat became like a paid uh, corporate distro, there was actually a, a free version called Red Hat Linux, which is basically what Fedora is now. And now the keyboard is still messing up. Oh, I wonder if it's this IME looking thing. So we can Korean English input method. Okay. Yeah. So it's actually, here we go. We can find user share icons longhorn. Oh, that's even cooler. So they've actually like ripped some stuff. Okay. Let's. So they were actually like planning on making a version of this that would look like Vista. Eclipse? They, they even had a Jaffa ID on this. I just I, I, I just keep being wowed by the kinds of things that uh, these people would ship. Gen 2 logo? Okay. It, you know, look. I, I I officially approve of North Korea. This is this is incredibly based. And then we got our menu. Uh, yeah, this does kind of look like this. So so they were actually gonna make a Vista version. Now I assume that changed when uh, the next supreme leader uh, decided that he preferred Mac to Windows, and that's why Redstone OS three and four look like Mac OS. Uh, but yeah, yeah, we, we even get a Vista theme. I don't know if you could make it work, but it's just, it's amazing the amount of labor that was put into this. And seemingly, I would also say the amount of passion. So that's going to be all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a like and subscribe for more content, more strange OSs. Uh, also, I think the odds of this are like one in a trillion, but if anybody who worked on this or anybody really from that part of the North Korean government uh, wanted to reach out, please send me an email. Uh, you know, look, if you got something, if you could, anyone has version four, I'd love to see it. You know, if anyone has any comments about this, uh, I'm all ears.